So this um, video is today is for our War Dragon people as well as our Oregon to Odessa people. We're trying to combine one a blog into two Several. blogs into one. Uh, humans in general. Humans in general. Yeah. Pig. Pig. Humans in general. Pig. I like that. So what we're discussing today is language and. As everybody knows, War Dragons is around the world, and you can be on teams with people that speak English, that don't speak English, that speak Japanese, or German, or Russian. Say something in Russian, honey. Stop. Something bad. Stop. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, and see, and see, now I'm like, uh, what'd you say? Actually, that's Fenya. That's actually jail Russian, <laughs> which was a whole lexicon called Fenya. It has a vocabulary of about 2,500 words if you really want to talk like a hardened Zek or Zachata, somebody who spent many years in the zone. Lovely. And the zone in Russian is jail. And We will not be asking how you know this language. Well... Bazooka Joe? I don't know, Wikipedia? Common knowledge? Anyway, mm -hmm. be that as it may, yes, you were saying? <laughs> so what I was saying is, War Dragons, you can be on a team with a bunch of different people from countries around the world. Um, but if you look at just English in general, English is a language that itself is pretty broken because it comes from a variety of sources, be it German, French, um, a variety of other sources. Um, and what I'm saying, what I have always noticed is I love the English language, and I've always noticed it's kind of broken. I am dyslexic, so I have this unique perspective with words um, in general. And uh, what I've noticed is people make assumptions when you're speaking um, that the other person knows exactly what you're saying, and they understand the words you're saying exactly the way you understand them. Um, which is not common knowledge. Um, it's not common because people have varying uh, educations, backgrounds, races. Uh, Graces, or like thereof. <laughs> lovely. Faces. And, yes. And so there's this confusion in language. You can like simply look at like the idea of homonyms and homographs and homophones and these words that sound alike and are spelled differently or... I have no fucking connection. Or no connection. There's or... a word like that in Russian. Cable. Mm -hmm. Kabel. Kabel. Kabel means cable. Kabel means stud. Uh, yeah? Like Just the inflections. Stud? Slightly. It, yeah? Like a stud in the wall or like my kind of stud? But I'm thinking more along the words of there, there, and there or uh, bear and bear. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice one. Or hair and... No. No, okay. <laughs> or, you know, there's a number of them. We know them. You know, you know these words. Um, but then there's, like, more challenging words uh, that the media loves to throw around. Racism, discrimination, prejudice. And people assume that everybody means the same thing when they talk about what freedom love means. actually yeah the word freedom and love okay. they can mean entirely different things to entirely different people in a different context mm -hmm. like i love my baby oh, cha, 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 cha. or i love velvet i love velvet in a very different way than i love my baby but i also love chocolate and chocolate does not love me yeah i can say that about a lot of sweet <laughs> things <laughs> um but we think about these words, and we think about the way the media throws them around, uh, the idea that everybody believes and understands them to be exactly the same thing. Freedom to me is much different than freedom to someone that is in a country that is completely and utterly repressed. Mm -hmm. And I would go there and be horrified. They would come here and be like, oh, look at how free everything is. And I'm horrified on how... Free could also be in terms of cost. It, it can. Or expression of being. Or expression of reason. Yes, that too. But then we look at our own freedoms, and I'm like, look at how they've been taken away. And someone's like, oh, you're too, you know. But in reality, what, where you are and who you are and your education level and your experiences determine the way you And your intent. And your intent determine uh, the meaning of the words you're using. Um, and in War Dragons, this can get a little tricky when you are talking with people that might not 
even speak your language and are using a translator. So I've done a variety of copyright work uh, where you were just writing copy for ads and stuff like that. And when I first started this, my work was always turned down. I was like, why is it this really great? People like it. And then uh, someone said to me, you're sending this overseas and they're translating it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. In War Dragons, opening chests means opening gold chests. Mm -hmm. For a cardiologist, opening mm -hmm. chests means doing a coronary mm -hmm. bypass. Yeah. <laughs> ha, ha. So, that's true. So the thing about that means is simile and hyperbole and metaphor don't translate. So when I said, oh my God, the dragon is as ugly as a possum, no one knows what that means. Yeah. Some people might think a possum cute. I think they're... Very useful creatures, but very ugly. And sometimes he's playing possum, but then he... <laughs> and they... Hiss. Just blows your base up. Exactly. So, the thing when you're talking in more Dragons that's essential is to realize that people that don't speak your language might be using a translator. Um, and what that means is things that you are using the words as, uh, like, and... Um, metaphors and descriptors are going to be lost on them and create confusion in the game among your team. And you can actually create confusion in a conversation. People told me, are you Russian? I said, no, I'm in no hurry, but I am Ukrainian. They're like, ha, 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 you made a zinger. He does. Oh. But, so you wanted to add something about... Yeah. Well, when I was looking at this idea for a video of language being beautifully broken, is I noticed that linguistics is the general branch. And there's the scientific study of language, morphology, syntax, uh, phonetics. Yes, well, semantics goes to sociolinguistics, uh, dialectology, which is lexicon and argot. Lexicon is basically the same set fania, which has probably a fairly sizable vocabulary if you've been in the zone, if you've been in, in jail, in a zonia, for quite a few years. And, you know, whether you're uh, basically a city dweller and you're hip with the urban argot, which can probably have a couple of hundred words, and you're... Hey, yo, man, you're hip with that shit. Not quite the same thing as a whole lexicon, but still. And the next branch is semantics, which is a branch of linguistics concerned with meanings. And there's the formal semantics, and there's the lexicon semantics, and cognitive and um, user-oriented. Mm -hmm. And the third branch is rhetoric, the art of persuasion or uh, of speaking or writing. And then it has the political aspects, which is a language designed to persuade or... Um, you know, bring up the audience, often, ah, unfortunately, often as it becomes a politic, lacking in any sensitivities or meaningful contact, let alone sincerity. So, basically, in a nutshell, is language like psychology, like card tricks, can be used to delude people or instruct yeah. people. I actually prefer to use the latter category of enlighten them. Oh, enlighten them. And this brings us back to word definition. Card tricks is another one, yes. Mm, yes. To actual words, when you're looking at a word, just simply knowing the definition of the word isn't always the end-all, be-all. Even the Webster Dictionary says that a definition shouldn't be the arbitrator of the meaning of a word, and that's the job of a lexographer. And so you have to look at the way the word is used within the environment you're in. So in War Dragons, you know, I'm going to you go hatch a dragon it means something different. What's a good... Or, what's a good one for that would be very specific war dragon lexicon? And well, to, I just, oh, I'm doesn't... running egg missions. Okay, I'm running mm -hmm. egg missions, so yes. I need lumber. Yes, I need lumber. I need wood. I need RSS. Well, that would be either food or wood. Yes. We often used to joke about that business saying that if he needs... Yeah, like I said, well, I... glue for the woods, you don't need to know a local dealer, you can just go to your Home Depot. Anyway, that's a separate matter. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. But you have to realize the environment you're in does have a determination on the language you're using and how you're using it. So, I hope this is informative and you think about what you're saying and how you're saying it. Not only in War Dragons, but when you're talking to other people, taking a pause and stepping back and making a determination. One other aspect of language is grammar. Um. And there's that famous story of um, somebody arriving in a kingdom, mm -hmm. and there was a note with them, a three-word note. Yeah. A three-word note. 
and the note was actually devoid of any grammar, and it says, execute, not spare. And depending on where you put the comma in that, execute, comma, not spare, means you lop his head, hang the motherfucker, roast him, whatever. Interesting. Yes, and execute not, comma, spare, means that he is granted life. And it's also a misconception that in the Roman courts of law, when they said up, it meant that he lives, and down means that he dies. No, it's actually the opposite. Down means he stays here on earth. Up means he's going to Olympus. So when you have a thumbs up, <laughs> motherfucker, yes, here, out of here. And here, yes, it's, it's been reversed historically. It's based on a lot of misconceptions, just like the idea, this is going off on a tangent, that okay. hell is a place where you burn. Because outside of old Jerusalem and Judea, there was a valley, and in that valley there was a cliff, and into that cliff you would throw convicts, well, who were executed, mm -hmm. bums, animals, yeah. you know, garbage Rapidly. that was thrown out, yeah. And they would rot in there, and the way that nature cleans itself up is basically when carbon-based matter, whether it's, you know, corpses or generic Gosh. garbage, yes, Decays, you have production of methane gas, CH4, when it combines with oxygen plus O2, you have H2O plus CO2 with a combustion process. So, basically, you know, stuff starts to combust. There are caves, you know, or the bowl of taboo, just translated as the oven where generations of bats have defecated, and there are no tours in those caves. The stench must be unbearable, you know, worse than in a flop house. <laughs> No, I'm serious. And, yes. you know, that's the way nature cleans itself up. Things rot and they combust with the production of methane gas. And some of the corpses would get stuck on the branches and they would roast and it would later on be used that you burn in hell. Actually, it's a very cold place, but that's a matter for a separate video. What but I, I do want to make a side note about guano, which is bat poop. It actually doesn't smell, but it's very, very toxic to you. Mm -hmm. And the reason I know this is a friend of mine had a bats living in her attic, and she was getting very, very sick. Mm -hmm. And um, she was sick all the time, and someone said, oh, you have mold. So she had a mold inspector come out, and he was attacked by the bats. And he's the one that said this. Of course, being the other bat is this, yeah. Yes. So you have a cat in the hat, and you have that rat with the bat. And this all Yes, and this also goes back to why do you drive in a parkway and park in a driveway? A driveway, that's right. Why do you, yeah, drive on a parkway and park in a driveway? It seems that a lot of language has become reversed. But again, what we wanted to do with this video yeah, is... Oh, ah, oh, yes, we wanted to use the... Haha, <laughs> the favorite of all curse word, fuck. It's an acronym, Fornicating Under Carnal Knowledge. And we're going to include a link with this video, and I think it's incredibly enlightening, something that would probably be good in a Harvard freshman class introductory video, origin of the word fuck. It's actually and it, kind of funny. Yeah, it, it actually is very funny, and it's very instructive. And in one of my books, uh, Let the Darkness Shine, mm -hmm. I actually broke down another, well, probably the second after the word fuck, shit. Selling hype is trendy. That is my acronym for shit. Huh? Just like fuck is fornicating under carnal knowledge. He used to say it's King's knowledge, but no, King is not spelled with a C. So, you know, shit is selling hype is transient, and the hype is how you price expectations today. So I kind of took the second most popular curse word in the English language, shit, and took it into my own direction. But we will include, yes, a copy of the word fuck. And on that single, wondrous note, I would like to say that our video is basically dealing with the technical aspects of the problems of War Dragons and perhaps some other things in your life, as we would like to say how to avoid getting fucked in War Dragons and in life in general, but that's a very long title. And what we wanted to draw basically as a common point of consent is that language like psychology, like cartridge, can be used to... Inform. Well, inform on... That's and the other one is, yeah... Basically, delude people and inform. Psychology can be used as a tool of power for deluding people or enlightening them. So, hopefully, we're trying to enlighten you. Yes? Yes. Yes, in a dark world. So, folks, basically, that's it. Take care. And is there anything you'd like to say? No. Ah, there's no knowledge that is not powerful. Oh, right then. Very good.